Hello boys and girls, I hope that you have been staying safe and healthy and doing lots of revision. You know I always advocate that you should make hay while the sun shines, meaning that you should utilize the opportunities given to you or the opportunities afforded to you while the conditions are favorable. Now the sun is shining. What are you waiting for boys and girls? Grab a hold of that opportunity. I am your teacher. Miss Elita Brown Phillips. Today for our maths lesson, we will be doing something a little different than what we are used to. We will be pushing in some revision of topics that we would have completed previously. But before we go into the meat of the matter, I wish to share a quote with you. It was Malcolm X who said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Boys and girls, are you ready to prepare for the future? Let's go. Your future is now. So today we will be focusing on revising some topics in math paper two. However, before we review the actual questions, I have a few reminders for you. The first one is the structure of your math paper two. By now, I know that you know the structure of the paper. In case you don't, here's a reminder for you. The maths paper two comprises six questions, what we would call essay questions or open-ended questions. You are allowed to answer four questions only, showing all workings clearly and your answers. On the question paper, each page is divided into two. You have the items, the section with the items, which would be your questions, and the section that is the working column. You are supposed to do your working in the working column, then supply your answer on the answer line. Number one will always be the compulsory question, meaning you must answer it and choose three other questions that you are sure you can gain full marks on. Boys and girls, remember when answering questions, you should answer in complete sentences if necessary. So let's recap the steps to solving problems. First, we comprehend. Comprehend means to understand. Then we devise a plan of action, how we are going to go about solving the problem. Then we unravel or we work out the problem. And finally, we recheck our work before selecting an answer or placing our answer on the answer line. So let's dig in. The first question I have here, it's a table. Let's read the instructions. The table below shows the after-school activities of pupils in a school. Study it, then answer the questions that follow. Boys and girls, take a minute to study the table, and then we will get into the questions. First question, which is the most popular activity? Which is the most popular activity?
playing games is the most popular activity. Boys and girls, this exercise will test your honesty. Put a big tick there if you have that answer. Let's move on to the next question. Remember, when you read a question, you can always refer back to the table to see if your answer is correct or to ensure that you have documented the correct information in working the problem. Second question, how many pupils spend their time reading, watching television, and playing games all together? The question asked how many pupils spend their time reading, watching television, and playing games all together. What is the signal word in that question? Yes, the signal word is all together. All together means we have to add up, find the sum, or find the total. When we add the number of children who spend their time reading, watching television, and playing games, we have a total of 260 pupils. Therefore, our answer should read 260 pupils spend their time reading, watching television, and playing games. Let's move on to the next question. How many pupils were in the school? How many pupils were in the school? Do you have a total of 410 pupils are in the school? That is absolutely correct. You had to add the number of children that like all the activities so that you will be able to know how many children there are in the school. Let's move on to our next question. How many more pupils prefer to play games rather than read? How many more pupils prefer to play games rather than read? Let's work. We know that 160 children like to play games. We also know that 60 pupils like reading. So therefore, to find out how many more children like playing games than reading, we had to subtract the number of children that like reading from the number of children that like playing games. 160 children represent the amount of children that like playing games. And 60 children represent the amount of children that like reading. When 60 is taken from 160, we have a total of 100. Therefore, your answer should read, 100 more pupils prefer to play games rather than read. Boys and girls, did you get all those questions correct? I am beyond proud of you. Keep up the good work. Let's move on to question two. Question two reads, solve expressing your answer in its simplest form. 
Solve expressing your answer in its simplest form. 3 and 2 thirds multiplied by 3 fourths divided by 1 and 5 sixths. So we rewrite the expression. 3 and 2 thirds multiplied by 3 fourths divided by 1 and 5 sixths. Boys and girls, do you notice that there is more than one operation in this expression? Yes, there is multiplication and division. Do you remember the rules you have to follow when you have an expression with multiple operations? Yes, you had to use bud mass. So we have multiplication and division. Which comes first? Division. So we bracket off the part of the expression that says to divide. And that would be 3 fourths divided by 1 and 5 sixths. Let's go to our next line. 3 and 2 thirds multiplied by. And we start working in the brackets. When we did division of fractions, remember we said that once there is a mixed number, you change that mixed number to an improper fraction. And you invert the fraction to the right. When 1 and 5 sixths is changed to an improper fraction, it becomes 11 sixths. So the problem reads now, 3 and 2 thirds multiplied by open brackets 3 fourths divided by 11 sixths now we can actually work this problem let's go to the next line 3 and 2 thirds multiplied by open bracket 3 fourths we change the division sign to multiplication and we invert the fraction so it will read 3 fourths multiplied by 6 elevenths. Let's cancel out. We have 3 fourths multiplied by 6 over 11. 2 into 4, 2. 2 into 6, 3. 3 multiplied by 6 will give us a total of 18, and 4 multiplied by 11 will give us a total of 44. So 3 fourths multiplied by 6 over 11 will give us 18 over 44. Next line. 3 and 2 thirds multiplied by 18 over 44. We know that when multiplying, if we have a mixed number, we change that mixed number to an improper fraction. 3 and 2 thirds is changed to 11 over 3 multiplied by 18 over 44. So let's cancel out. 11 into 11, 1. 11 into 44, 4. 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 18, 6. So now we have 1 multiplied by 6 and 1 multiplied by 4. 1 multiplied by 6 will give us a total of 6. 1 multiplied by 4 will give us a total of 4. 6 fourths. That is an improper fraction. And remember, the question stated that you should express the answer in its simplest form. 6 fourths. Let's reduce 6 fourths. We can use 2 to reduce. 2 into 4, 2. 2 into 6, 3. So we now have an improper fraction. 3 over 2. Let's change that to a mixed number. Changing it to a mixed number, the answer will be expressed in its simplest form as requested by the question. 
2 into 3, 1, and 1 remains over 2. So on our answer line, you should have 1 and a half. Let's move on to question 3. If set B equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and set C equals 3, 5, 7, 9, first question. List the elements of B intersect C. List the elements of B intersect C. Your answer should be B intersect C equals 3 and 5. The elements 3 and 5 are found in both set B and C. Next question. Using sets B and C, complete the Venn diagram below. Using sets B and C, complete the Venn diagram below. What are the elements in set B? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What are the elements in set C? 3, 5, 7, 9. So we have to list the elements that are found in set B alone, then set C alone, then we put in the intersection. The elements found in set B alone are 1, 2, and 4. Three elements. The elements found in set C alone are 7 and 9, two elements. The elements that are the intersection, 3 and 5, will be placed at the point where B and C intersect because both elements 3 and 5 are found in sets B and C. Final question in number three. List the elements of B union C. List the elements of B union C. Let's work, boys and girls. You should have B union C equals, open bracket, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. Close brackets with a comma separating each number. If you have that, put a big tick. You have done excellent work, boys and girls. And guess what? If you had this whole question 3 correct, you would have gained five marks. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Let's look at our final question for today. Question four. So boys and girls, we would have answered four questions from the exam paper. The compulsory question, and we chose three other questions that we can handle very well and get maximum marks. Here is a bar graph. Use this bar graph to answer the questions that follow. First question A. How much money did Anil spend on bus fare? 
How much money did Anil spend on bus fare? Your answer should be, Anil spent $1,000 on bus fare. Question B, what is the difference in the money spent on clothes and food? What is the difference in the money spent on clothes and food? Answer, clothes. How much money did Anil spend on clothes? $2,500. How much he spent on food? $500. What is the signal word in the question? Yes, the signal word is difference. In mathematics, difference tells us that we must minus, subtract, take away, decrease, or reduce. So we will subtract the amount of money Anil spent on food from the amount that he spent on clothes. When we subtract $500 from $2,500, we have a difference of $2,000. Therefore, the difference in money spent on clothes and food is $2,000. Part C. How much money did Anil spend on entertainment and clothes? How much money did Anil spend on entertainment and clothes? Let's work. How much money did he spend on entertainment? $2,000. How much money on clothes? $2,500. How did you decide how much money he spent on those two items? Yes, we have to add. When we add $2,000, which represents the amount he spent on entertainment, and $2,500, which represents the amount he spent on clothes, we have a total of $4,500. Therefore, Anil spent $4,500 on clothes and entertainment. Last part of the question. How much money did Anil have altogether? How much money did Anil have all together? Let's work, boys and girls. So we want to find out how much money Anil had all together. What is the signal word in that question? Yes, all together. All together tells us that we must add. We must find the sum. We must find the total. 
Let's calculate the amount of money Anil had. We know that he spent $2,500 on clothes, $2,000 on entertainment, $1,000 on bus fare, and $500 on food. When we combine the total amount of money Anil spent on each item, we have a total of $6,000. Therefore, Anil had $6,000. Did you have all the parts correct in question four? Well, if you did, you would have earned yourself five marks. Excellent work, boys and girls. I am so proud of you. Your long-term memory is in tip-top shape. So boys and girls, this has brought us to the end of today's lesson. I hope that this review would have refreshed your memory and strengthened you in areas that you are not so strong in. Boys and girls, I know that you can do this. I know that you have a good long-term memory, so you can reach for those concepts and work your mathematical problems accurately. Boys and girls, thank you for joining us today. And remember to continue pushing in lots and lots of studies because your future is now. You know I always say, aim for the moon. Even if you miss, you will land among the stars. Bye, boys and girls. See you next time.